All right, guys, so in today's episode, we're going to be uh, running the old um, Celestron C11 and the Williams Optics uh, Zenith Star 61. It's a little bit cold tonight, so I've got a few layers on. Got my trusty compass with me and my level. Everything's all leveled up, everything's powered up. All we're waiting for now is for the stars to come and show themselves. Tell you what, guys, it is chilly out there. It's time to get the observatory roof off. Not forgetting, I got my little Tony out here with me. A nice cup of brew that the missus got me. Yeah, little Tony. You've been playing your ball, haven't you? Yes, I know, yeah, yeah. Look. Hey, Tony Baloney. Hey. Yeah. You said hello to everyone. He's a good lad. So we've got our Tony Baloney out here with us, playing a little bit of football. Just waiting for the stars to come out. Bloody cold. <laughs> what you got? You got your ball? Yeah, you, uh, you have a bit of my tea in a minute, can't you, boy? So it looks like it's going to be a nice night. Other than it's a little bit windier than what I'd like. I'm not, not particularly a fan of the wind, not when it's like this, but the Williams Optics, I don't think will be affected too much by that. I think if anything's going to be affected, probably the C11, even though it's in the observatory, you can see, but it's still a big telescope in the wind. Right, so we're going to get our little snapper all plugged in, so we don't have to worry about it, we'll get it set up. Then we can automatically take our pictures. Stick that in there for now. I'm not forgetting. Better get a battery in there. So I've got a couple of targets planned for the night. Let's go and have a little look and see what we got. Come on, in, boy. In you go, lad. Whew. In a warm room, lovely jubbly, need that. I'm getting cold out there now. So we're gonna look at a couple of targets. Um, we've got the AVX and the Williams Optics all set up, it's all ready to go. I'm not gonna be doing no tracking with that tonight because we're using the DSLR 
I'm not going to go into doing ridiculously long exposures. It's a bit windy as well. I don't think it's going to benefit us tracking or guiding any sort of items tonight. But what we're going to do, loads of loads of uh, frames, get it all set up. Um, the Celestron C11. I think I'm going to take the autofocuser off. So been having a little bit of issues with that and I'm not sure whether it's the whole locking system of the uh, the the mirror on the back of it or, or what the score is with that need to have a little look into that a little bit more uh, I have read a couple of different links about what people have said about it they're not overly happy but uh, we'll figure it out all right let's get into this all right so we're gonna start off as you can see I'm on Stellarium the sun's going down at the moment actually looks pretty accurate you know this is pretty decent so uh, I like using this anyway what we're gonna do we're gonna just fast forward it a little bit so here we go gonna get into the night sky a little bit we're not gonna do a meteor shower search or anything like that so at the moment it's gonna be running at half past five so this is an hour's time and um, we have a little bit of an issue with looking south and southwest and west so I mean south we're we're okay but I have got houses here and here so um, we are just gonna try and keep our targets as close to east as we possibly can so what I'm thinking is so right for the C11 we are going to run let's get a telescope up shall we I'm still figuring it all out myself guys I've got some programs running in the background I think I'm actually going to shut those down quickly not that it's anything big running in the background but let's just shut all of those down and then we can uh, hopefully have a little look at what we've got here I mean, this is a cracking little target. I don't want to be going there. I found a target that I think will suit really nicely. And I might be a little bit early on in the night. It's a terrible thing. I've got a terrible memory and I keep on choosing targets and I'm meaning to write them down and I just bloody forget, don't I? I'll find my targets and we'll jump back on it. All right guys, so welcome back to the channel and I've chosen two targets for tonight that I think are a little bit risque, if you like. One of them is, the other one's not at all. Um, so we've gone with the Iris NGC 7023, which is in the con constellation uh, Cepheus uh, in the north, the far north. And I decided to go with this because it framed up really nicely on the uh, C11. Uh, is it? Yes, yeah, like everything, there's always a risk when you're when you're choosing your target. I, I decided I thought this one was going to be okay, and I'll run a preview before I actually start capturing. But but before I even start looking, uh, this is the target I really wanted to go for. Uh, you can see well, they're all different. They're all different colours. How people have created more vibrant. Sort of images um some people have kept it quite natural um you know i like to try and keep the photographs as natural as possible uh, maybe something a bit like this i might actually i might put a couple of um star spikes in but we'll see i've got the plugin on the on the photoshop but yeah i'll try to keep everything as natural as possible when processing and then the second target which is run by the williams optics 61 zenith star i chose the andromeda galaxy the nice safe easy option uh, the s largest galaxy closest to the milky way um yeah it made sense it's a huge target I wanted to be safe running with the DSLR. Um, like I say, I've not really got a lot of experience when it comes to astrophotography and DSLR. So that's kind of a little bit of a, a new thing for me getting used to. And that's why I chose the Andromeda Galaxy. All right, so we'll get back into the observatory and continue with our night. So guys, nothing's easy, is it? The first thing I've had to do tonight after setting everything up is culminate. I, 
I was struggling with the focus. It just didn't seem like it was right. I finally done it. Um, first time I've ever done it as well. And and to be fair, I'm surprised I've had to do it so soon because I've only had the telescope for maybe a month or so. I've used it once, once or twice. I've used it now, so I'm really surprised that it, it, um, that it needed that. Uh, but I've got it pretty bang on now. Um, but but now you know it's like anything, isn't it? Let me zoom in and just show you quickly. Look at the dust specks that I've got on my camera. You can see them. I mean that is um, it's just gonna be one of those nights, you know, where uh, one thing after another. But it don't matter. We're gonna figure it out. Gonna get some earbuds. I've got my cleaning gear. We're gonna take the camera off. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a sprucey Bruce. Make it look all uh, all nice. I'm just doing a, um, a five minute exposure at a minute. I just want to see what the guiding is like. So the guiding seems pretty good at the moment. Um, but it's really windy outside. So that's where I think we're going to kind of come into some problems. And my hands are frozen. But we'll carry on. Like we always do. So guys, I'm actually surprised at how good my guiding's going. Have a little look and see what you think. There's my stats down the bottom there. A little bit bumpy to start with. You know, considering it's a windy old, uh, it's a windy day. That's not too terrible. I'm pretty happy with that. So our target's uh, NGC uh, 7023. Uh, this was just a, I was doing continuous um, capture or preview when I was running it. But we're just coming up to a 300 second exposure. I'll show you once I've, uh, once that one's come up. So there you go guys, that's our first images come through, uh, 300 second, it's looking okay, I think, yeah the stars are okay, they're not too plain, it's a shame I've got, it's always the way in it, I've got something running through my frame on that one, I don't know why I've got hot picks there. Never had that before. Um, so, on the edges as well. My stars are round enough. I mean, this is this is right to the edge. So, um, my my column column columnation. Uh, obviously, I've done it well. I must have done it well. So, anyway, look. Let's start running some uh, captures. I think. Um, uh, so what I'm doing 12 frames an hour so two hours so let's do 36 oh, let's do 48 yeah let's do 48 frames no light images uh, 300 seconds let's get that all set up uh, I won't worry about doing my my other frames or anything like that right now. Two seconds of delay between images. Do you know what? It's about time that we started uh, photographing. Then I can go and get on to my... Here we go. I mean, this is going to be a cracker, mate. I tell you. Our guiding is going really nicely. I think once I've left the... Uh, once I've left the observatory as well, everything will settle down nicely. Uh, I'm going to go out to the uh, Williams Optics now. I'm all, I'm all set up with this side of things. So I can leave this now. This has got four hours of run time. Uh, but you, I'm not sure if you can hear that wind out there. I mean it is windy. I've got the old uh, Glaveroos on. 
gonna get out so I didn't uh, this guy set up this Williams optics I've got, I have got it set up but it's not I, I didn't realize wide field mate wide field wide field that's freaking difficult isn't it I mean I struggled with that um, I almost need like a spotting scope on it or something I got my old aviators out on you know the, the missus loves it when I dress up as an aviator <laughs> right so anyway I'm going to stop laughing because I'm shaking my observatory stupid shed right I call it an observatory <laughs> it's a shed but it's my shed I love it so there that all you people that say oh he's just got a shed <laughs> he's got a shed with a roof that comes off well yeah it's my shed with a roof that comes off <laughs> all right anyway i'm going mad in the cold let's go and uh let's go and get even colder let's go jump outside i sort this williams optics out i'll catch up with you in a minute all right so night two <laughs> the gods have been kind it looks like it's even another clear one uh, so last night was a bit of a disaster I had to columnate the uh, the C11 last night, which was a bit of a shock. I didn't expect I'd have to do that, but blurry stars and and I was thinking I can't seem to get these pinpoint stars of such a new telescope. I was surprised that that's what I was going to have to do. So uh, today we've got the C11, which we're going to be running, and we've also got the Little Williams Optics which we're going to be running. It's, it's a little bit colder tonight than it was last night. Um, I'm not too bothered by that. I think that, that makes uh, for, for good astrophotography, really. But we'll see. Uh, I did phone up the widescreen centre today and had a little chat with them, because uh, I had a bit of an issue with the overcurrent that I'd said about. What I've done, though, is I've gone into the settings in the do heater, and I've ramped it up to the 10 amp. Uh, and I don't seem to be having any problems right now, but we'll, we'll see once we start running tonight. I mean, there's still a few teething issues with with the whole setup, but because we've had so much shitty weather for such a long time, I think that's where we've uh, we're sort of fallen into a bit of a bit of a, a bad sort of situation um, with the whole setup of of you know the observatory and getting it up and running the way I wanted it to be. So uh, yeah, I'll. Um, I'll go and make myself a nice cup of tea in me, in me little warm cup and then I think I'll come back out by then, I mean it's 20 past 4 now, so the nights are, are already getting a bit lighter but with the Williams Optics last night as well, the disaster I had with that, I, I had started uh, imaging uh, Pleiades last night just because um, it was the only thing I could really see so I've put a, a spotting scope on that well, wide field is so different to you know the big old telescopes I, I thought wide field would be easier mate it, it's definitely more difficult I think it's more challenging with wide field I think the results are very different and, and the whole setups are very different so it's nice to have a wide field and a, uh, a deep sky imaging uh, setup so I can, I can actually run both rigs completely different setups and gain experience on on both ends of uh, the astrophotography side of things which makes for better viewing for you guys uh, just makes my life a little bit more difficult but like uh, you know who don't like a difficult life <laughs> 